Waffle Sky Foundry is a favorite battleground for both Mind Freak and Team Dignitas. It was Team Dignitas's choice, so we know that Mind Freak has the choice of the next battleground. Anything we would like to see, anything we're expecting to see, I can tell you what we're expecting to see because <laughs> our lovely prediction is showing us it's Battlefield of Eternity, something that Mind Freak has picked before and shown some strategies on. Just bring the brawl. This is what you need to see at this point. Maybe just bring something a little bit outside of Dignitas' uh, comfort zone and just fight them. You can easily play around people on Voskaya Foundry. This is much more difficult because you've actually got to get to the Immortal at some point. Is Tank Brightwing outside of Dignitas' comfort zone? We saw on this map, you know, this is what they played up against Heroes Half. I really want to see it. I want to see it streamed. I want to see it where we can break it down and I can analyze it and I can give us a replay and we can try and make sure that every Hero League game is plagued by it. I hear the word plague, but I think you mean graced. It's a term of endearment. Graced yes. by it, yeah. <laughs> uh, any other strategies that we're expecting to come out from either team on Battlefield of Eternity? Uh, we saw Sylvanas draft as well, I believe, from Mind Freak. So yep. perhaps bring that draft. back in. Exactly, it was. And we also saw it yesterday as well, where they tried to backdoor keeps, which was mm -hmm. quite interesting. But the fact is, Sylvanas is one of the most classic heroes on this map for a reason. If you don't fall behind in the early game, and that's a real big if and a big reason why she's not played that much these days. But if you can do that, then she can turn a first immortal, which can sometimes maybe get the front wall, maybe get a little bit of value onto the fort. It can turn that into an almost was guaranteed for maybe even a keep wall and that's when you start to snowball out of control always got to keep in mind those race heroes too hanzo gray main rainer sometimes Li ming maybe hammer well, that's that? it i mean th the question for me right is we saw what genji did yesterday we're like hey you can have the hanzo we don't even want to play it that's when you have so much confidence in your ability you want to take us to a team fighting map will team fight you now Interesting to note, right, as you point there, is Hanzo and Taranda have gone through the ban phase. This is unheard of yes. in a much higher seeding rank. Team Dignitas do stick to the true and trusted favorite, which is that Hanzo. You'd have to imagine that Mindfreak are now, unless they're going to do something weird and quirky, forced to respond. Taranda's still up too. Exactly. Taranda's still up, and they have first priority on tanks already banning out both Garrosh and Diablo. So they could go for a Muradin or an Anubrak, anyone with that high lockdown potential and really just have Taranda as the follow-up and go for a little bit of a burst style. A big classic there, but Ooh. not Taranda, it is Karazim. Also helps out with the race, yeah. yep. deceptively so, as a support with all of his punches. Murden Karazim also getting the support and warrior here doesn't, it leaves them quite open for yeah. whatever Team Dignitas gets in these next two picks and after the bans, but it also gives them the possibility that if there is a strategy that they want to be playing and they want to not allow Dignitas to have too many picks left to respond to it, they've left it to where you can't really read what's coming up. Look at the situation right now. If you don't put a Tyrande, you have to pick it as a response. So now you have both of the best racing carriers in the game. You got the Urail, obviously there for the peeling potential and the ability just to try and cause havoc if she wants to try and slow down the race that Mindfreak will be doing. But so far, when we talk about race, it is all in their favor. Mindfreak need to draft so much aggression. What comes to mind for me, I'm thinking we have to see a tracer from them. Ooh. They've played it before. I thought. Vanilla loves the hero. It is possible, but the fact is there's already a little bit of jumping in potential with that Yorel. With some protection, though, they might be able to play around it. We're going to see that Abatha removed. Abatha Karazim is already pretty scary. I mean, Karazim on his own is already scary against a Hanzo, like you said, and Muradin as well. Have an Abatha hat on either one, and uh, Hanzo is going to be in a little bit of danger. So a pretty heads up ban there from Dignitas. All right, Mind Freak, what you got? This would be the place. There's Razor. Tracer. Nice call out. And Lee Ming. Yeah, so this is a, a staple here for John as well. Loves that backline hero. So, I mean, if you're looking right, realistically speaking, you're looking at a composition which, from Dignitas, is designed to win this immortal. There's no chance, regardless of the first two picks for Mind Freak here, of you realistically being able to, um, you know, compare and, and, and compete. So you have to dive, you have to get kills, you have to eliminate at least one to put up any kind of stand. And, you know, with a team composition built to team fight, there's always a comeback potential. A noob with most tanks banned out. It was a noob ETC mostly that was left. So picking that up first and giving some more backline dive potential. And we are going to see the Thrall coming in as well, giving them that triple frontline, in case someone to maybe share the seven sided strike. Last pick for Mind Freak, probably Ryu's hero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm thinking, I want to say Blaze but I feel like he needs to flex it. Arthas with it against a triple melee, bringing out the Lich King to try and keep them alive here. It's a little bit of extra lockdown, 
a little bit of extra distraction to let Tracer do her thing. And it's crazy amounts of sustain, kind of going counter to the big immortal race they've already set up. So we just saw an Anub picked into the Leeming uh, with knowing how yeah. her skill shots can be blocked by beetles, but she gets rid of the cocoon super fast. Um, but how are we feeling about Anub and Yorel, even the Thrall, as a way to make sure that they can keep heroes like Taronda and Hanzo alive despite Tracer dives it's a and Karazim dives. It's a pretty sustainy comp with all of the frontliners being relatively self-sufficient but also empowering each other. Um, the role follows up great on Nubarak, and Nubarak, of course, is the hard engager, can set up for everyone. Yorel gives armor to both of them, keeping them both sustained while they are sort of the main front force to keep her a little bit safer. They all synergize quite well together, but it is that Karazim Tracer just diving past them that is going to be the biggest threat. I think in a different map, I'd have liked to see ETC instead. I feel like ETC suffers a fair bit when it comes to the poking wars that can take place on a map like Battlefield Eternity, especially for that objective. So I like the Anubarak for the ability for them to get a cocoon. They've built in those last three picks some very, uh, you know, sustaining, some very self-sufficient heroes that don't require right. really the resources. So all those resources can be piled into the Hanzo to make sure he gets the job done. Yeah. Hopefully it's enough disruption to prevent Mindfreak coming in and saying, there's the kill, cheers love. Well, this game, Dignitas wins. They don't drop a single game in the group stage, and it's Mindfreak's last chance to win a game in the group stage. Back over the casters for game two. Keldor, I actually quite like the draft here from Mindfreak. It brings a little yeah. bit of flavor from Australia. They can get in there and force some fights. We get some kill potential available, but can they pull it off against Dignitas? I mean, on an execution level, Dignitas is definitely ahead. And another thing is also Tracer is going to have a lot of pressure on her. You mm -hmm. have a late thrall being picked here, so with the chain lightning, you can just like poke away at yeah. her. And we have actually seen some adjustments into the crash lightning now as well, just recently. Yeah. And even Turanda is giving Tracer oftentimes a run for her money. JPL now on a new Burak in game number two. Wubi on Urel on the left with a poke on Hanzo. We see Snitch on Thrall, and it is Azalea on Turanda. On the opposite side in the red, it's Mind Freak. Gonna be having Vanilla on Tracer, Mad Hacks on Karazim, Fat94 on Murden, John on Lee and Ryu to show off some Arthas. And Thrall still holding his talent here. Now traditionally we have seen Echo of the Elements making a huge splash, especially in Phase 2 of 2018. But just recently, and especially when we're looking towards Battlefield of Eternity, we have seen more and more teams starting to dabble at least a little bit in uh, the Crash Lightning once again as yeah. the level 1 talent, trying to build up that damage. And there's no better map to do that than Battlefield of Eternity because you have those fights. And here's exactly the talent choice for Snitch. There it is. And it makes sense too. Like when you're at home thinking about what you want to pick up on your level one, make sure that you have that top laner available. If you have to be in the top lane as Thrall, you need to go in the Echo of Elements. You need to be able to finish that up so you can build up the stacks. Hang on though, Mind Freak in the middle. Pour some bit of fight. They were going to go ahead and go straight for that shrine. Or I'm sorry, that well. But Team Adinktos catches him in the act red handed and they drop him like a drop bear. Really well done. Yeah, the drop bears in Australia have always been a huge concern. But in this case, Dignitas was well aware about the threat in the Immediately moved in here. Now, typically, you see that play with Genji. He moves over the wall and then goes in, but uh, Dignitas identified that there was a lot of mobility and there was a threat of Murad and Karazim doing the same thing. Bat94 caught on the wrong side of this fight. Three versus one, and that's not good odds even for Murden. Good news, though. Because they died in the middle and Thrall wasn't there, Crash Lightning stacks are not being stacked up here for Thrall. So, a clever play by Mindfree denying those stats. <laughs> If that's the good news, you have a problem. Gotta look at the silver linings, man. A I... clever play. We feed on the other side of the map. That means Thrall doesn't get stacked. High level plays, man. Team Ding tossing for another oh, kill. Oh, that that's hurt. an arrow. Yeah. Now, again, as we said before, it's going to be a bit tough for Tracer considering what she's up against, especially once that we're having Snitch with good stacks on his level one. He should be in a position where he can just continuously poke against her. And then you have also the Hunter Smart if needed if you don't want to blow up a tank with it. So there are definitely a lot of tools that Dignitas is running here that can cause problems. It's kills in the early game that Dignitas gets. Death timers are low. You don't get too much experience, but it's definitely a lead that we are seeing for Dignitas, especially when it comes to map presence. Mind Freak is really wanting a fight. Now, three times in a row, here's even Murden have rotated together. They offside the battleground, looking for the one that might be rotating, but that did not unfold the way they were looking for, because Team Dingtoss was in the bottom lane, working on the up bruiser camp. Stitch in a 1v3, but he has teammates coming soon. Here's a new break with the Pro Charge into the Impale. There's a Lunar Flare. Bat 94 is going to be able to jump away, but 
Poik, be nice. <laughs> Poik is nice. Like he is not sorry at all for this one. Goes in and drops the geometry. Drops the dwarf, and that was a perfect kill. That Fat 94 really thought he's safe. Yeah, he thought it was fine. He waited out all the CC that was coming his way just to make sure he could jump at the last second. The scatter arrow being able to connect with him was on point for Poik, and there was a pick. To be honest with you, the race potential that we're actually seeing right now on the side of Mind Freak is increasing significantly because we have a choice on level seven on level four to go for the sledgehammer. We're gonna talk about this in a second, but right now Mind Freak definitely has a lot of pressure against the model. Yeah, Ding Toss sees a snatch come on over and they jump straight on top of Ryu. There's the Luna Flare right from from Zelia, and that'll be a kill. Vanilla trying to escape, but Mind Freak has done some damage. Can they escape? John already using its teleport. The Scatter Arrow does not connect the way they want to, but the Wolf does. The Wolf does, but John's still able to teleport away, at least for now. Dodgers out on JPL. Another stack for Snitch as he throws a Jane Lightning after them. But for now, Mind Freak walks away here. Coming back to that point, though, we have really good poke through Li Ming against the Immortal. We have Karazim on the side of Mind Freak. And now, once that we are having some stacks accumulated on the Fat 94's level 1 talent, the Perfect Storm, that added damage is also added to the damage that Sledgehammer, the level 4, dishes out. So in the mid and late game, if we are having any kind of race around the Immortal, there's a good chance that Mind Freak can actually deliver some serious blows to it very quickly. I mean, we've already seen the result of that. We have Exhibit A of the damage they've already done when they were yeah. able to jump on it for a few seconds earlier than Team Dignitas. And that's with only six stacks on Murad in exactly. Perfect Storm. It'll get much better for them, too. So let's go ahead and continue to focus on Mind Freak, who is now setting up for some more damage on the Immortal, but Team Dignitas is here to defend. Once again, the attack here against Nichia, who's also trying to stack his level four talent. Four stacks now in the Frost Wolf pack here, doing very well with it. Needs to be careful that it doesn't reset the counter, but here comes the race, and Mind Freak is going for it, and they are able to win it. They have those Storm Balls, and the Sledgehammer is delivering in the early game. Well done, and Vanilla's looking for a kill. He jumps in, goes straight for Snitch, who is actually going to be finishing up that Wolf Quest at level four, so going to be having no issues when it comes to mana, so solid for him, and also the cooldown reduction is huge. Looking over his Crash Lightning, what do we got here? Nine stacks, Keldor? Yeah, nine stacks for him so far, so adding up that damage, and with that you already have more than 100 extra bonus damage on it. Of course, once that you hit 30 heroes, you get the quest reward as well. He's still a far cry away from that, but already it's adding up. Fat94 and Matax going for a second attempt on the fountain here as Dignitas is forced to defend the top lane, and they're getting it. So, nice cute move here. But of course, the problem if you do it with this variation is you have to actually commit two heroes to it instead yeah. of just one. Kind of torn on that play. On one hand, you got the Immortal. It was a low on shields, but you have the dive potential to jump on the back line and maybe stop Hanzo from clearing up that Immortal. On the other yeah. side, if you don't think you can get those kills, Hanzo's yeah. been cleaning up quick, so let's go take a well and maybe win the next phase. It was a super low shield Immortal, you know. What yeah. can you reasonably get out of that situation? How much damage can you actually do? You're going to get that wall. You hope to get some damage on the fort itself. Oh, but once again, attack against Vanilla. He's able to Walk away though, and they're going for Poik, who barely jumps away. But Matax is on the case, was apparently surprised that he landed there, was already moving away, and then realized, hey, I might even have that kill, but that bit of hesitation costs him his life. Him diving in the back line, they'll put Zillion in a prime position to drop down that hunter mark, and then provide the two heals from Poik, and there was nothing more he could do with that hesitation. It really looked like he was surprised that he got in range. Yeah, like, like oh, I'm here. Yeah, he's all of a sudden, wow, I actually got in range for that, and I'm now up there. He walked away a bit. I think if he stays on him, he can get the kill. Talking about getting the kill, Snitch wants one. Not gonna be able to get Whoa, Vanilla went for the recall. He saw the poison come in, the Ancestral Wrath, and he thought he was gonna get a little bit too low. He walked into a minion, and he hit his recall. It's one of those panic moments where you're a tracer and you have that low yeah. health bar. Unfortunate for him. I mean, to be fair, with UL jumping in too, you know, yeah. there's a good chance that she gets just in range to get that kill. I think he was already out of teleport charges, but definitely rough for him. Tough game, as we said before. There's a lot of tools that Dignas has, and they also have the awareness, you know, to wait for that recall to try and force it out. Now we are seeing level 10 soon coming in for Dignitas. They already have seven kills against zero. But they missed out on the objective, and Mind Freak is starting to continue that stacking process. Fat94 with 10 stacks on the perfect storm, but they really need to try and rush it now if they want to win the second one. Exactly. Dignitas is nearly on 10. They've chosen their flavor, and they want a team fight, so they come straight to Team Dignitas before they hit level 10. They jump on top of the Immortal, but John needs to start kiting backwards. He'll join the safety of Ryu, but that gives Team Dignitas time to step up, and they're getting closer and closer to that level 10. Mind Freak either needs to fight now or skedaddle. Will be once again just jumping forward here together with JPL. Another Stormball comes through, but they're trying to chase the dwarf. 
Fat94 is on the run, and he's on the wrong side of the map. I mean, that is a delayed kill if Thinkers wants it, but they're just saying, why would we get baited here? Let the Dwarf run, we don't care. Let's focus on the Immortal. We can't leave that alone. There's still too many tools on Mind Freak's side. We won't lose the objective here. They spotted Tracer running to the Immortal, and they need Snips there for defense, but Yorel did chase Murden down for a little bit. Finally, he got to the safety of his own fort. I'm actually a little bit scared now. You have the Sun Ring set up, and then the arrow to follow it up from Hanzo. And talking about the arrow, comes through against Karazim, and immediately Poik focuses up in another kill. A double as we see Karazim and Tracer go down. Two picked off, and Mind Freak has to back up Team Ding Toss with Hanzo. Should be able to start working on that Immortal, and he will on the bottom side. Murden is looking to jump on top of him, though, and he has that Stormbolt available. Will he be able to connect it here? He jumps in, goes in for the dash. Poik, however, gets the safety of Azalea. Here's a Lunar Flare, and Fat94 with no jump may be in trouble. Yeah, will be wants to kill now. And they're going in, they get it. Also, 16 stacks for Snitches that 174 extra bonus damage already. Tracer is hurting here quite a bit. 16 stacks for Fat94, so the Sledgehammer combo does enormous damage against structures and against the Immortal already. Here comes the Sundering as Snitch is all of a sudden a bit in trouble here. The Pulse Bomb comes through, but Vanilla is not able to secure the kill. Yeah, Sessor Rath gonna give the heals and also give him time to put some damage on Vanilla, who has to back on up. Mind Freak still trying to buy time for that level 10 as the Immortal is equipped and ready for Team Dignitas. If you're a Mind Freak and your Karazim in particular, are you thinking about a seven-sided strike here or are you thinking about a Palm? That's a tough question, to be honest with you. I think you go Palm, they're blowing up. Yeah, they're actually really being blown up here. So Palm, I would say, would be a safe bet here. Then again, if you make the argument that you kind of need to uh, get a counter kill yourself, then seven-sided is always a decent option. Question is simply, do you get that isolation? Maybe with a good play through Li Ming, you know, with a wave of force, yeah. you can set something up. But that is just a really slim hope here. I personally would love the Palm in this setup, but we're gonna see how Mind Freak decides to run with this. They just lost Murden again, and now that opens up the key for Dignitas to grab. They can't even think about a heroic. Yeah, they have to think about this key. Haymaker. The keep is taking some damage here. It's gonna be Haymaker. It's now we talk seven sided after I. We're gonna make some plays right now. Fat94 is gonna jump into that back line and see if he can pull somebody into the hands of Mind Freak. Can they find a kill? I am not quite sure if he doesn't need that avatar. Once again, the Pulse Bomb against Poik. He might actually fall here, barely gets away. Tracer ain't that lucky. She goes down and she's not the only one. Li Ming joins her in death. Two already down. The keep gone and the Immortal on the core. Manhack still has that seven-sided strike, trying to escape JPL. He's trying to get that big knockup. Fat94 on the back line has some health and wants to try and come and defend. He has some teammates here in a few seconds, but this core is already falling. Dignitas thinks they have the win in hand as they even drop a web on Karazine. They go for Fat94 here, and they are likely to get another kill. The Dwarf falls. Here comes Mind Freak. The death timers are low, but it's not going to be enough. They're trying to get the kill against Poik and Zelia. They get one, they get two, but it doesn't help them in the end. The core still falls and Dignitas walks away with a 2-0 victory against the Australian team. An entertaining match for Mind Freak to go out on. Saw a couple of opportunities for them jumping in with the aggressive plays. Uh, another theme for them is just trying to make sure in the early game they don't fall too far behind. Had they gotten to level 10, maybe they could have gotten those kills, but Dignitas, after hitting level 7, has that race, has the kill potential, and was able to pull forward and continue to be undefeated in the group stage. Mind Freak got the two kills there towards the end, but of course the aggressive composition that we saw from Dignitas just a bit too much for them to handle. Great engages from Hukurak, the follow-up Ruth Roll was always there, Rel jumping in together with them. Very melee heavy setup here for Dignitas that was quite successful. And let's not forget about also Snitch just stacking uh, that Crash Lightning the entire time, poking away against Tracer and making it very difficult for Vanilla and also John to get any kind of value with the aggression they were trying to bring. Well, last series for both Mind Freak and Team Dignitas. Let's go over to Gilly and crew for their final thoughts. And in one move, Mind Freak goes out swinging versus Team Dignitas, locking in the Cindergosa, locking in the Haymaker, trying to take one final fight to them. I have so much respect for that. Yeah, it's very tempting to just say, okay, maybe if we just pick Avatar or something, we can just take a full straight up fight, Army of the Dead, and just try and sustain it. But the likelihood is when you're on that kind of defense, you need to blow up the enemy team so you have time to kill yes. the Immortal. So instead of going quietly into the night, 
Mind Freak went out in a blaze of glory, and it was magnificent. Yeah, I loved it. And uh, we were talking afterward. There was, I was like, there, there's one take I'm not thinking of. Why can't I think of it? It was Johanna that yeah. I was thinking about with the blinds, all of that, and then with the Tracer and Leeming with Cocoons. But JPL proved he is a very capable Anubarak, and I look forward to seeing more of his Anubarak. I mean, maybe the communication right there during the draft was like, I'm bored of Johanna. Look, can I just play some Anubarak? <laughs> like, I want to do something. But that's like, like his brother. I want to try like, I want to pad my stats. I want some damage. <laughs> I want to, like, you know, CC chain. And they had some, like, pretty insane CC chain moments yes. right there. You know, you saw Muradin without the Avatar, without level 10. Just stun after stun, cocoon to start it all off with. There was a disgusting amount of damage and follow up potential that Dignitas had. Yeah, Jay bringing in the aggression for his last tournament. It's pretty awesome. Also, Snitch was doing that quite well too, Tatcher. He really, really was in this game and in the last game as well. Maybe a little bit of a call out there running in that Alarak and being so successful That's with true. it. But the fact is, Snitch, he is looking really strong in this tournament. He's increased his hero pool even a little bit more, and he is looking world class on everything, and that's exactly what we want to see. But we've heard now that Rich kill you, and we heard yesterday that Snitch, Snitch kill, kill you. you. So they've both played Alarak. They're both best friends, so... Snitches get riches? Confirmed. <laughs> Illuminati, we found the script. <laughs> that's pretty good. Well done uh. there. <laughs> Now, for reals, though, I feel like Team Dignitas looks the strongest of this tournament. Do you guys agree with that? I think so. So far, it's looking really good, but we've mentioned it before. Genji, they're usually a team that can sometimes have that little shake, uh, shakiness in the group, and they've got it over with at this point. Question is, is that the case? Or are Dignitas just looking that much stronger than them? Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see how Genji Miracle turns out. Yep. Maybe the one game with Liquid was a fluke. Maybe it was uh, some sort of situation not ready for the draft, not ready for what Liquid could bring. Uh, but it does feel like Dignitas is one of the, this is maybe the best chance we've ever seen for them to win an international event. Yeah, and, and for, for their sake, for JPL's sake, for the legacy stake, maybe just for the upset story and all the narrative that's led up to this moment, it would be the Cinderella story. And one that I'm sure many fans are going to get very hyped for at Burbank or uh, Anaheim next week in uh, for Blizz uh, BlizzCon. Well, something we can all get hyped for, because I know you guys are excited, I know I'm excited, you guys are excited, and you guys are excited, is that Heroes Hearth Esports is going up against Tempest. This match has a lot of implications for groups. We're going to a break. When we come back, Heroes Hearth takes on Tempest. See you soon. Here, Vanilla goes in with the portal. Here comes Gun 94 looking for a Gorge. He's tossed the corner. There's a taunt. There's a force of will. Will he be able to grab anybody? Not yet. On the back line, the Wubby comes in. There's a ring of frost and it actually takes out Toronda. Celia is down. That's a kill for Mind Freak, but Dignitas has done it. They're moving in again. Here comes Medivh once more with the ult. And we have the kill against Dekka Kane as Dignitas is going four versus four. Jaina falls as well. Dig with a salvo. Real barely escaping. He got the safety of his own fort. I'm actually a little bit scared now. You have the sun ring set up and then the arrow to follow it up from Hanzo. And talking about the arrow, comes through against Karazim and immediately point for us up in another kill and double as we see Karazim. Bad 94 is going to jump into that back line and see if he can pull somebody into the hands of Mind Free. Can they find a kill? I am not quite sure if he doesn't need that avatar. Once again, the pulse bomb against Poik. He might actually fall here, barely gets away. Tracer ain't that lucky. She goes down and she's not the only one. Lee Ming joins her in death. Two already down. They keep going in the immortal.
The 2018 HGC Finals are brought to you in part by Republic of Gamers, Corsair, T-Mobile, Samsung SSD, and NVIDIA. The Heroes of the Storm Global Championship is back. By watching and cheering with bits on Twitch, you can unlock new chat emotes and exclusive in-game items, all while supporting your favorite HGC teams. Bits are a virtual good you can buy on Twitch to cheer, celebrating amazing moments and amplifying your voice in chat. And during HGC, when you cheer for your favorite team, a share of the bits spent will go to that team. As you cheer, you can unlock loot chests, mounts, and exclusive emotes when personal and global cheering goals are met. There is more loot than ever, but as new community items are launched, the old ones will disappear. Get them all before they're gone for good. Right below the video player, you can track team-specific and global progress, check out your individual goals, and see leaderboards that highlight each team's total cheers and the top individual cheerers. To get started, buy some bits by clicking on the bits gems at the bottom of chat and selecting Get Bits. Then, when a team pulls off an amazing play, click on the bits gem in chat, select the team logo, add the number of bits you want to use, plus a message to cheer them on. You'll summon a team-themed animated cheer mode to celebrate the moment loud and proud in chat. The more bits you use, the cooler and more animated the cheer mode. Want to share your love of the game with chat? If you cheer 1,000 or more bits at once, not only will you receive two loot chests, but you will also randomly share eight or more loot chests with people watching with you. The larger the cheer, the more members in chat you will gift with a loot chest. And lastly, be sure to link your Blizzard and Twitch accounts to claim your loot. We'll see you in the Nexus.